Now that we understand how the different models and the views are defined, let's take a look at some of the view controls that we have available in each one of the different view windows. Views by default have a view control toolbar located at the top of each view window. The exact tool layout varies by the type of model that the view is displaying. So you'll notice in the 2D view and the 3D view and the profile model, we have slightly different view controls. And in the cross section, we have totally different view controls. So let's just take a quick look at some of these basic view controls in the 2D model and the 3D model first. So you can see we have a, a tool to update the view. We have a tool to zoom in, tool to zoom out. We have a tool to window and area. We also have a tool to fit the view as well as rotate the view and pan. If we come over into the 3D model view, we have the similar tools there. So we can update, zoom in, zoom out, zoom window, fit a view, or rotate a view, or pan the view as well. The 2D and 3D view controls can also be found under the view tab on the ribbon. Now I want to take a closer look at the profile model and the cross-section model because these work a little bit differently. So I'm going to left click into the profile model view. Let's talk about the profile model exaggeration. So by default right now, the profile vertical exaggeration is set to 10 times exaggerated vertically. If we want to change the vertical exaggeration, all we have to simply do is go up into the view attributes here, select the view attributes drop down, go down to the civil panel and expand that using the down arrow. And from here, we can set some preset vertical exaggeration values. So I'm going to go ahead and select 20 and you'll see the profile model view now gets exaggerated 20 times. Now we can also exaggerate the view horizontally as well as vertically and we can achieve that using the mouse wheel. So let's take a look at how to change the horizontal and vertical exaggeration using the middle mouse button which is your mouse wheel. So once again I'm going to click into the profile model view. I'm going to position my cursor somewhere in the middle of the view to set the focal point. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select control on my keyboard and use the middle mouse wheel to adjust the horizontal exaggeration so you can see how I can stretch it and compress it if I need to. I'm holding down the control key on my keyboard and using the middle mouse wheel to do this. We can also adjust the vertical exaggeration by holding the shift button down and using the middle mouse wheel to adjust the vertical exaggeration that way as well. So it's a couple different things there. And again, we have the update view tool, the zoom in, zoom out, window area and fit view tools are also available as well. Now let's take a look at the cross section view window. Now you can see here we don't have the zoom in and out tools and the pan tools like we had in the other three view windows. We still can make those same types of adjustment. You just have to use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Also notice the exaggeration. The default exaggeration is set to one time so there is no vertical exaggeration in this particular view. If you'd like to exaggerate this view, we can go up to the view properties. And you can see the vertical exaggeration is set to one. Let's go ahead and set that to two. Press enter on the keyboard and then navigate up a station or two. And that will exaggerate the view two times. Now the horizontal and vertical exaggeration can be set using the mouse wheel. So let's take a look at how to change the horizontal and vertical exaggeration. So once again, position your cursor somewhere in the middle of the view to set the focal point. And once again, we can press the control key on our keyboard and use the middle mouse wheel button to change the exaggeration. If we press the shift key, we can change the vertical exaggeration. So that's how that functions. Now also, if you notice under the view properties tool, we have three radio buttons here that we have options for to fit the section. This will fit the full width of the cross section into the view. We have an option to center the backbone. That'll center the view around the cross section backbone. And we also have an option to center on current offsets. And that will allow us to center and hold the current view. Let's go ahead and navigate through the section. So you can see at the top of the screen here, we have some view navigation tools or cross section navigation tools to navigate through the cross section. So we can go up 
the next station by simply clicking on the next station button. We can go backwards by clicking on the back station button. We can go to the last section of the alignment. We can go to the first section of the alignment. So you can see here we have some very useful tools to navigate through the cross sections. So sometimes it's necessary to zoom into a specific focal point on the sections and navigate through the cross section so that you're zoomed and centered around this particular point. So let's take a look at how to accomplish this. I'm going to go up to the View Properties tool. I'm going to select Center on Current Offsets. I'm going to make sure I set my vertical exaggeration back to 2. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to zoom into the zero point here, my zero offset point, using my middle mouse button. Then now as I navigate through my sections, Notice that the view stays centered and zoomed in to that zero offset point as you navigate through the cross sections. If you need to navigate to a specific station, you can just use the drop down arrow here, key in a new station, and it will take you to that particular location. You can also do a station by data point. So if you do a right click and you say locate station via data point, then you can come over here into the plan view or the profile view and pick a particular station or key in a particular station value and it will display the cross-section at that particular location. So it's just some handy tips there about the cross-section navigation tools. And lastly, I'd like to talk about how you rotate the 3D model view. So let's go navigate up to the 3D model view and left-click in it to make it active. Notice we have a view rotation button here. This allows you to rotate the view into nine different view rotations as well as a dynamic rotational view. So I'm going to go ahead and select the top view to rotate the 3D model into the top view. And you can see that rotates the model so that we're looking straight down from the top. Now if we want to take a look at the 3D model in more of an isometric view, we can come back to the View Rotation tool, select the Isometric View tool as well. If we want to rotate the view dynamically, we can just go back up to the View Rotation tool, select Rotate View, Set the method to dynamic and notice there's a crosshair that appears. And this is gonna this indicates the center of rotation. So you can snap to an object to rotate around that particular point. So what we could do is we can just come over here and grab it. And then as we rotate around, you can just hold down your left mouse button to rotate around and navigate the 3D model view. And when you're done, you can just simply release the left mouse button and right click to complete. So that's how the view rotation tools work in the 3D model view. If you want to rotate in the 2D model view, simply come over into the 2D model view, go up to the view rotation tools. Notice the view rotation tool settings dialog shows up. Here you have the option to rotate dynamically or by two points, or you can do an unrotated view. So I'm going to select the two points method. Notice down at the bottom of the screen it says to define the first point. It's going to pick a point here. And then it's going to say define the x-axis of the view in the lower portion of the screen. So I'm going to set the x-axis by defining another point up this way. And then that will rotate my view. To unrotate the view, it can simply go to the unrotated option and then left click into the view and that will unrotate the view. Now we understand how view controls work. Let's talk about the different display styles that are available for viewing your 3D model. So I'm going to zoom into the 3D model view over here. I'm going to just window into an area so we can see how the current display style is set. You can zoom in a little bit closer and you can see that this is rendered. And the rendering or the shading that is applied to this particular model is called Illustration Ignore Lighting. And we have a variety of different display styles that can be used to provide instant rendering of your 3D data. We have options that include just a simple wireframe to more advanced options like photorealistic. There's a few ways that you can adjust and change the display style. One way is to come over to the top of the view window. And from the display style list, you can just select the drop down. That'll bring up the Change View Display Style Tool Settings dialog. And then from here, you can select one of the preset settings. So for example, if we want to change our display style to wireframe, we can simply do select wireframe and apply it to our view. If we want to select something like 
transparent. We can go down in the list, select transparent, and left click in the view, and that changes the display style. If you want to go to something that's more photorealistic, like something like smooth, and go to smooth modeling, left click into the view. You can also adjust the lighting if for some reason you apply a display style and it seems to look a little dark. You can toggle off the default lighting and increase the brightness, but just going into the adjust the view brightness. So you have many ways to adjust the display styles. You can also adjust them over here in the view attributes tool. So you can see up the top of the view attributes tool we have the display style that's currently being shown. Once again, if we scroll through the list, you can see there's a bunch of predefined settings that you can choose from. I'm going to go ahead and select the one that we had originally, which is illustration, ignore lighting, and then I'll go ahead and adjust the view for us. So experiment with some of those as you're working on your projects and see which one works for you. Generally, the illustration, ignore lighting is a good one to start with. If you need a more transparent mode, use the transparent, or if you need to see all the way through the model, then you would select the wireframe. Those are some of the three most popular ones to use. And one last thing that I forgot to mention was that if you go up to the display style button here and you left click and hold, you'll get access to the predefined display styles as well. So it's many different options for getting to the display styles to render your 3D model view. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.